I'm Charlotte. Good afternoon. You are watching The Ugly Atheist, and today I am going to discuss... I titled this episode sort of half-joking, um, calling it atheism. It's not for everyone, implying that it's a choice, I guess. I mean, if it's true that we can't control what we believe, then none of us kind of choose what it is we believe. We're, we're not in control of what c convinces us of the truth of a matter. I wanted to kind of talk about why atheism is not something I would recommend for people. I think that um, religion is sort of a necessity for uh, for hum humanity, um, and it doesn't really matter too much what religion it is, but the point of religion is to maximize social cohesion, and by that I mean societies need a scaffolding from which to to build itself and to build its own culture. And I find it interesting that humans have this strange propensity to subdivide. Um, I, I call it cultural fractalism or fractaling, where any given movement, any sort of belief system or, or movement will necessarily subdivide into smaller and smaller factions. Um, for example, um, if you have Southern Baptists, for example, that is that splintered off from from regular Baptists, and that splintered off from uh, Protestantism, and that fractured off from Catholicism, and that splintered off from Christianity as as a whole, and that splintered off from the, from Judaism, and that splintered off from the Western ethos, I guess, the Western Western countries, Western cultures, and, you know, the Roman Empire. And, of course, the next category above that would just be, or global humanity, I should say. And if you look at Southern Baptists, I'm sure there are further um, subdivisions in there among them. Um, but if you trace it all the way down, you can see that there is at least one outer group from which the subdivision splintered from, and it's their concentric uh, bubbles or spheres, if you will, um, on outward, and it's an unbroken chain. And I think there are evolutionary reasons for why people are prone to uh, subdividing like that. Um, we. I think it probably aids in our survival to have to be part of a larger group, but to also be subdivided into family units, possibly even as small as family units. And even family units can be um, subdivided. But it's, of course, I think the, the advantage of having smaller groups is that you have better control of resources and probably a better chance at allocating resources or, or uh, obtaining what you need for survival, uh, food-wise, shelter-wise. Um, building a structure for a small unit, family unit, is a lot easier than building a massive uh, structure for, for everybody. Um, so it's just more manageable sizes, I think, that probably aided in our survival. But then, of course, being part of a larger community also aids in our survival. So I think that our propensity to subdivide is is rooted in our, our evolutionary past. And I also think that uh, being part of an identifiable subdivision gives you sort of a sort of bragging rights, um, especially when it comes to something like religion, where you can claim, well, you guys have it wrong. What we believe is the truth. We've got a corner on the truth. So we're going to separate ourselves from, from you guys to because of uh, we don't want to be, you know, 
um, soiled by your sinful ways or whatever it was, whatever it is. Going back to the idea of the concentric bubbles that I was discussing, and this is this is what the problem is with with atheism, is that for any other type of religious belief, um, you have that immediate outer circle. So there's that unbroken chain of of community. But with atheism, there's a, there's it's just its own bubble, and there's no outer community immediately. You have to make a huge leap to get out to the next available community bubble, which is probably global humanity, which is it's a very isolating uh, predicament for, for atheists. Now, that's been changing in, in recent decades, of course. There are atheist groups that, that meet um, for the sake of community. I know when I was living in Utah, I was part of some free thinkers group, but a very small group, I think about maybe 10 to 20 people that ever met at any one time. And we would, uh, you know, have uh, functions and picnics and that kind of thing, and also have just uh, discussion nights. And I don't know, if, well, usually on the weekends is when we would meet like a Saturday morning, I think I forget what it was. Um, but that is a far cry from back when I used to be a Christian and you'd have, I used to go to this Omega church down there in Lake Forest, um, California. And there was, it was so easy to make connections, make friends, um, and have that community that you need with, with family and um, just being a part of something. And I discussed, I think, the last episode about the idea of humans wanting or needing to be part of something bigger than themselves. And certainly religion satisfies that requirement because you are no longer just living for yourself. You've got, you feel like the, uh, you feel the, the anointing rather of God on your life. And you, you have this mission now that, that you've been called to, that is to, that is global in, in its scope. You know, you've got to save the world for, G for Jesus or, or bring the light of Christ to the world, that kind of thing. And you know, that, that is not insignificant. It is something that humanity really, really needs. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, it's not doesn't matter what the religion is, because um, you find this in among, um, you know, Hindus, Buddhists. I don't know about you know, Buddhism has another form of a higher calling, but it's the same principle, where you are tap tapping into something that's bigger than yourself, and that that's the uh, that's the key. But with atheism, you don't necessarily have that. Um, you're not all. All atheism really is is you've just come to the realization that he, that wait a minute, God is like made up. There's there's nothing out there. Um, you're like well, like in my case, I was like well that that kind of sucks. I kind of lived a lot of my life for for this this belief system, only to find out that it's not true. Like what 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 the heck? That blows. And I think what normal people do, and this might sound abnormal when I spell it out, but this, and I talked about this again in another previous episode that I think is on Rumble. I don't know if it, I didn't put it on YouTube, but um, probably over 70% of people who go to churches aren't actually believers. I mean, they're probably agnostic at best, but if you ask, I mean, they're not going to admit it, but like very few people over the age of 10 really think that Adam and Eve really happened and that snakes could talk or donkeys could talk or, you know, they might believe that there's some thing out there, but, um, but what normal people do is they pretend, they pretend like they believe because being part of the community is more important than what things you literally believe or not. Um, and people pretend like they believe just to be part of the community. And I can't fault them for that because that's just what normal people do. And um, some people like myself, I, I, I tried to go back to church, but I just couldn't bring myself to live knowing that um, I didn't really believe the things that were being taught. There's a, there's a predicament there. Now, here's a dilemma also. What happens if 
you have a start a family, you have kids, and you send the kids off to daycare and then so that you can work because you need the money. So you and your husband were working or you and your wife are, are, are working, the kids in daycare, and that kid goes from daycare, grows into kindergarten, elementary school, then into high school. So their only exposure to the family culture is maybe on weekends, but when they get older, then they don't even, you don't even have weekends. They go off with their friends and then, then they go into college and they're taught that uh, Christianity is, is evil and that um, it's wrong and, and there's no God. So here we have a predicament where you have a human being who has the natural need to believe in something bigger than themselves being told that what they grew up believing or didn't grow up believing but were supposed to be aligned with a certain religion that religion is not only fake but responsible for a lot of the world's evils and racism and this and that so now you have a generation of kids who still have that need to be part of something bigger than themselves but it no longer religion is no longer on the table for them they've ruled that out so they're going to adhere to whatever crazy quackery the the professors in their college start telling them and that's when you start getting people aligning themselves with antifa and the radical left and that is a problem cuz these kids they need they need to be part of a community that's bigger than themselves and for, fight for a purpose that's bigger than themselves. But if that purpose is is tainted with with incorrect notions about the world, then they are no longer a force for good. This generations become will become a force for for destruction. And I don't know what the remedy is for that to that other than just start focusing on on family and, and faith and that that of course has its own problems too because you're teaching stuff that's not true to your kid but if you believe one lie that's destructive and one lie that is uh, neutral at best or possibly constructive in their life I would go with the lie that's constructive I mean it's one thing that you can teach your kids to be kind to others and the golden rule and that kind of thing but it needs to be uh, bolstered by something that's an idea that's bigger than themselves like they're not doing this just for themselves or just because you told them to do it but because there's a, a higher calling for character a higher calling for integrity those things of course are in short supply in the world so so that's why i to get back to my the, the title of this video um atheism is not for everybody because if you are young and impressionable and you have the notion that there's there's no god there's nothing bigger than you that is uh that stands for all the good in the world that you need to try to fight for um then you are open to to other ideas that are that turn out to ultimately be destructive not only to society but to yourself a lot of the people who claim to be part of antifa and the radical left they are they'll probably tell you they're they're atheist um at, le at least with regard to christianity um and i don't know if you know who ayan hersi ali is but she was a prominent atheist maybe five years ago ten years ago um she was in the same circles as like uh, sam harris and uh dawkins and dennett uh, but she recently converted to Christianity and not because she believes it, but f for the the right reason of it to her, it represents Western culture, which is um, which is under attack. And for better or for worse, Western culture is re responsible for so much uh, wealth in the world and bringing people out of poverty. And with the uh, idea of capitalism, it is definitely a system horribly imperfect but i think it's worth fighting for and christianity is a critical part of that even though christianity is not uh not exactly steeped in truth with a lot of its claims but 
Um, I think it is a net positive for the world, and I would, um, I would agree with I would agree with Ayan her CLE's uh, stance and her her decision to to claim to be Christian. She doesn't believe that the resurrection happened. Um, at least she, when she made her public profession to be a Christian, she steered clear of any of those claims, uh, supernatural claims. Um, and that's perfectly fine. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, so I would, um, again, advise people not choose the route of atheism, but of course you can't help what you believe. Um, I would recommend people stay uh, plugged into their church um, and uh, just try to be a force for positivity in the world. I'll probably just leave it there for now. Um, I know there's there were a couple other points I wanted to make, but maybe we'll make those in a fu future video. Um, so anyway, I'm Charlotte. You've been watching The Ugly Atheist. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing, um, hit the like button, leave a comment. And um, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for your time.